If we're told the interest rate is 8% per annum, we actually don't have enough information to discount or compound forward. I'd like to compare a discrete compound frequency to a continuous compound frequency and show you the formulas for translating between the discrete and continuous compound frequencies. So I start with a simple example that only requires three assumptions. First, what is the future value? I'm going to assume $100 that we will receive in the future. Second, how far in the future? Let's assume I'm going to receive the $100 three years in the future. And third, what is the interest rate we will use to discount? So what is the discount rate we will use to discount the $100 to be received in three years if we want to discount it to today's? present value. That's the PV, stands for present value. So let's assume we're told that the discount rate is 8% per annum. The per annum is typical in general. Unless we have a special need, interest rates should be specified in annual terms. That is to say, in this case, 8% per annum. So here's an interesting thing that even some finance students forget. So far, we haven't been told enough information. That's sort of interesting, which is to say that the 8% per annum as a discount rate is an incomplete specification until we are told what the compound frequency is. So that's why I have the present value solved in three different ways for three different compound frequencies. Although these first two are just examples of a discrete compound frequency, annual, monthly, there are any number of discrete compound frequencies. We could go in between with quarterly and we could go um, all the way up to daily compound frequency. So we have several different discrete compound frequencies we can choose and then we only have one continuous compound frequency. So my annual compound frequency, for example, you can see the Excel is very straightforward, but I'll also draw it out. It's going to be just equal to my $100 divided by 1 plus my interest rate, so that's 1.08, raised to the third power. So that's pretty familiar method for discounting at 8% over three years. But if we look at that formula, we know that implicitly it's with annual compounding. And then this is also called the effective annual rate. So the effective annual rate is a special case of discrete compound frequency where the compound frequency is annual. But if I want to go to monthly compound frequency, how do I get that? Well, I'm just using 100 divided by the quantity 1 plus my 8% rate. That's 8%, not very good, but my 0.08. And I'm dividing it by, in this case, 12, because there are 12 months per year. So my denominator is the number of periods per year and then that quantity, instead of being raised to the third power to be consistent, I need to raise it to the thir uh, th number of years times the number of periods per year, in this case 12, so it'd be 36. So that my general form here for the discrete, now I'm just going to put it in general terms, is future value divided by 1 plus the rate divided by m is the number of periods per year, and I'm raising that to the n is the number of years times the number of periods per year. So that's my general form where you can see we can substitute any number of periods per year. And as I went from annual to monthly, my present value decreased. Okay, what if we kept increasing m? If we went to 250, that would be 250 trading days per year. We could go to 365 calendar days per year. If we kept increasing the number of periods per year, we would uh, approach the limit, which would be continuous with continuous compounding. In this case, we're continuously discounting, and it has a very elegant expression. It's just 100 times e raised to, in this case, my negative 8% multiplied by three years. So that my general form here is future value 
multiplied by e raised to the negative rate times number of years. So very elegant expression for the continuous compounding, in this case continuous discounting, and it's going to have the lowest present value of, all, of any of the alternative discount frequencies. So that, remember that point here was that we're told 8% per annum, but it has a different significance as with respect to 8% per annum with annual compounding, with monthly compounding, and with continuous compounding. So my second sheet here just replicates John Hole's table and shows this just from another angle. Now we go compounding forward in time as opposed to discounting. We say the initial value is 100. 8% is the 8% uh, per annum is the stated, also called the nominal rate. And again, now this time we're compounding forward three years. So what is the future value of $100 in three years? If we compound at 8% per annum, okay, so far incomplete, but with various compound frequencies. So now with M equals 1, 2, 4, all the way up to 365 daily, and you can see that our general form here for discrete compounding is the present value multiplied by, and so this time we're multiplying instead of dividing, 1 plus the interest rate divided by M for the number of periods per year. So you can see annual is 1, semi-annual is 2, quarterly is 4. And we're raising this to the power of n number of years times the number of periods per year to be consistent. That's the general form. And you can see in the Excel spreadsheet, I'll provide the link. These labels are dynamic. So we have different future values. And as we increase the compound frequency, the future value, as we might expect, is increasing such that we get to the limit, which is continuously compounding. And it's similarly, it had an elegant expression in discounting. It has an elegant expression in compounding forward. It's just the E raised to the rate multiplied by the number of years. Very elegant. And it will be the highest future value. It will be higher than any of the discrete alternatives. Okay, so my final sheet shows the tool the tool that um, a finance candidate in the FRM especially wants to have this tool that comes in handy. And that is the ability to translate a discrete rate to its equivalent continuous rate or vice versa, a continuous rate to its equivalent discrete rate. So in the, that's what I have in the upper panel going from discrete to continuous with the formula here that's solving for continuous. And here, going from a continuous to discrete, which is to say solving for the discrete rate as a function of the continuous rate. So in the top row here, for example, and I'll just bold this, what I have here is 8% per annum with a compound frequency of once per year, so that means with annual compounding. And so we have an 8% annual rate. And the question is, what is the equivalent continuous rate? And that's solved for by using this expression. See where we plug in the discrete rate of 8%. In this case, for when it's an annual discrete rate, the M is 1, we take the natural log, we multiply that quantity by M, in this case 1, and we get the continuous rate that is equivalent to 8% per annum with annual compounding. What that means is that if we were compounding forward to a future value or discounting back to a present value, we would get the same result if we use this continuous rate as we would if we use this dis 8% with annual compounding. Similarly, just for example, if we if we if we are given 8% per annum with monthly compounding, the equivalent continuous rate you can see here would be 7.973% such that if we use that, 
we would get the same present value or future value. And so we can also go from continuous to discrete. So in this case, a continuous rate of 8%, that's fully specified. It's already got the, it's telling us what the compound frequency is. If we want to convert it to a discrete rate, it has several different translations, right? There's only one continuous 8%, but there's a whole variety of different discrete rates. So if we want to get the annual equivalent, that would be a higher number. It's 8.329. And so that's the interest rate we would use to get an equivalent future value if we're compounding forward or an equivalent present value if we're discounting back. So this is a key skill to be able to apply these formulas that translate or that in this case solve for the continuous rate, that's the rate in C for continuous as a function of the discrete rate, that's R for M, and vice versa. The uh, We want to know how to uh, solve for solve for a discrete rate as a function of the continuous rate. And I just noticed that I was missing the M, so I just caught that before I finished the for, uh, video, inserted the uh, M back in, and, and made this formula match. You can see the correct calculations below. So I hope that's helpful.